Welcome, everyone, to our session on leveraging GitOps to conquer network ACL challenges. I am excited to have you all here today as we explore the fascinating world of GitOps and how it can help us tackle network ACL challenges. Throughout this presentation, we'll be drawing inspiration from the Star Wars character just to make this more engaging and memorable. I'm going to talk about what challenges are there in network ACLs, how GitOps and not AI can solve them, and how to go about implementing them, as well as some best practices that you should keep in mind. Uh, before we embark, uh, let me introduce myself. I am Tushar, and I work as a network engineer at Google, and I'm thrilled to share my knowledge and experience with you all today. So let's get started. Network access control list, or commonly known as ACLs, are the guardians of our network regulating traffic, and enforcing security policies. Just like the Jedi's protect their galaxy, effective ACL management safeguards our data and systems. Properly configured ACLs enhances network security, enforces access control, segments network traffic, ensures compliance and regulatory requirements are met, and also assists in troubleshooting and incident response. Given the critical role of ACLs in securing on-prem networks, it is essential to have an efficient and effective approach to manage them. As network infrastructure becomes more complex and dynamic, managing network ACLs can bring certain challenges. Let's explore what some of those challenges are and how version control, collaboration, and automation can help us in managing those challenges. First is support for existing tooling, which is often platform dependent and tied to a specific vendor. This lack of platform independence limits flexibility and hinders the ability to manage ACLs consistently across different environments. You can, of course, use templating languages like Jinja to generate your configurations, but they have their own limitations. While templates can help with code reuse and parameterization, they don't guarantee the correctness of the generated ACL rules. Moreover, even templating solutions are often platform dependent, requiring separate templates for different platforms or vendors, and even different versions of the same platform. Now, ensuring that the ACL configurations are consistently applied across all relevant devices is a manual and error-prone process. Auditing ACL changes, tracking who made mod those modifications, and what were the implications of those modifications can be a complex and time-consuming process. This usually affects your auditing and compliance efforts. Oftentimes, we have seen that the multiple teams, such as network administrator, security experts, and even application owners need to collaborate on ACL management. But the lack of a structured collaboration process often leads to confusion and misconfigurations. Without version control, it becomes difficult to track changes, revert to, reverting to previous configuration, or even maintain a clear audit trail of ACL modification. Now, network environments are constantly evolving with new resources being added, removed, or modified all the time. ACL rules need to be updated frequently to accommodate these changes and maintain the desired security posture. This can again be a time consuming and a prone to human error process. Now, let us look into how GitOps can simplify the management issue that we see with ACLs. When you use GitOps, ACL configuration will be treated as code and stored in your Git repository. You would then be able to define these rules in a structured and declarative format, such as YAML or JSON or any other language of your choice. Just by storing configuration as code, you can enable version control. It would allow you to track changes and allow you to maintain a history of modification and even allow you to facilitate rollbacks if needed. You would also be able to decouple your ACL generation methods from ACL application methods for the end devices. 
this decoupling would allow you to generate your ACLs in a platform independent way, enabling flexibility and portability across different environments. You can also integrate a GitOps-based solution with network source of truth such as Netbox, where ACL configurations can be automatically generated based on the stored information. This would ensure that the ACL configuration remain in sync with the network infrastructure and will reduce manual errors. Organizations would also be able to write tests to verify the correctness and effective effectiveness of these ACL rules. You can use testing to validate your network flows, ensuring that the traffic is allowed or blocked as intended based on the defined ACL rules. Operators and developers can leverage testing to ask specific questions such as whether traffic on certain IP addresses is allowed or denied. It can also be used to provide a diff to the operator or reviewer to see the effect of the proposed changes, which would facilitate informed decision making. You would then also be able to integrate the ACL management into your CI CD pipelines. Your CI pipelines can automatically validate configurations and run the required test. Your CD pipeline can handle the deployment of these ACLs to the network infrastructure. You can employ different deployment strategies based on your network environment and requirements. For example, in case of backbone networks where stability is critical, you can have a slow rollout methodology where changes will be gradually deployed to a subset of devices. However, for less critical environments or campus networks, you can deploy those changes all at once across all the relevant devices, enabling faster implementation of these security policies. Now let us look into how we can implement network ACL management with GitOps. Before we go into this method, let us just quickly recap what actually defines an ACL or what are the components of the ACL. The first is networks, which are the source and destination IP ranges to which the ACL rules will apply. Second is your scope, which define the boundaries of its application, such as tenants and zones. Third is your applications, which is just the ACL governed by their ports and protocol. And last are the actions, which is what needs to be done when, when the rule is matched. This can be drop, accept, reject, count, or even log. Now that the components of the ACL have been defined, how would the solution interact with network source of truth? There are two ways to go about that. You can use a network truth, truth of source solution which provides an API. For example, Netbox, which is an open source web application for managing and documenting network infrastructure. It acts as a central repo for network information, including your IP addresses, your VLANs, and device configuration. In this case, Netbox, Netbox would provide all the relevant data that is required to manage these definitions. Your second option is to simply use definition files, again in YAML or JSON format, to specify the network information required for ACL generation. These files can either be manually created or automatically generated from other sources. These files will then be fed into the different ACL generation tools. We explored earlier that a major challenge with network ACLs is that they are platform dependent. Let us examine a few tools that will address this issue. The first tool is Capirca, which is a tool developed by Google for generating ACLs, but it, but it works on a high-level policy language. It can take policy definitions as inputs and generate platform-specific ACL configuration. It supports multiple networking platforms such as Cisco, Juniper, and even IP tables. Your alternate option is Erlion, which is a fork of Capirca, 
but provides a declarative language for defining ACL policies. It also supports multiple network platforms and is also open source. Now that we know how to generate ACLs, how do we test and validate these generated ACLs before deploying? The answer to this question is pre-summits. While pre-summits can do different type of validations, to the very least, you should have the following pre-summits in your ACL pipeline. First is syntax validation, which would ensure that the ACL policy definitions and generated configurations are syntactically correct and free of errors. It would also run lint checks to enforce any coding style guidelines. And lastly, it would do policy val validation to verify that the ACL policies align with the organization's security guidelines and comply with regulatory requirements. Next, how do we deploy these tested and validated ACL configs? You can use any CI CD tool of your liking to deploy your network ACLs. Typically, the CI CD pipeline would consist of five steps to deploy the ACLs. First is checkout, where we would fetch the latest ACL configuration from the Git repo. Second is pre-summit checks to run the test and validation to ensure code quality and compliance. Third is ACL generation, where you would use tools like Kaperka or Aileon to generate platform-specific ACL configuration. Fourth is deployment, where you would apply these generated configs to the targeted network devices using automation tools like Ansible or Puppet. And your last is post-deployment validation, where you will verify that the ACLs have been successfully deployed. In case a device is found to be non-compliant or the deployment fails, there should be options for remediation, such as automatic rollback, notification to the relevant team members, and quarantine of the non-compliant device. Lastly, I will discuss how to check the diffs in these generated ACL configs. This helps in situations where one might want to know the impact radius of their changes. There are a couple of ways to do that. You can check in the generated ACL where the change list author can choose to check in the config alongside the ACL policy definitions. By including the generated ACL in the Git repo, the diff would become directly visible to the reviewer during the code review process. Your pre-summit checks would verify that the checked in ACL matches the generated ACL, ensuring consistency and accuracy. This approach will provide transparency and allows reviewer to see the exact changes that will be deployed to the network devices. However, this only works for a small number of ACLs. Your alternate option is you can compute the diff in pre-summits. Your pre-summit system can generate the ACL configuration based on the proposed changes and compare them with the existing ACL configuration. The computed diff can be presented to the reviewer in the form of a comment within the code review tool or as an external URL. This approach eliminates the need for the CL author to manually check in the generated ACL and ensure that the diff is always up to date with the latest changes. Now that we have covered some of the fundamentals, let us dive into some of the best practices that can help you unlock its full potential. The first question is whether you want a single ACL for the entire infrastructure or multiple set of ACL rules. For single ACL, it will ensure consistency and would simplify your management as all devices would, would share the same ACL configuration. However, it is harder to debug and at times might not accommodate device specific requirements. Having multiple ACLs would allow, will, uh, allows for granular control and customization based on device specific needs and can be easier to manage for large scale networks. However, it requires more effort to maintain them consistently and also can lead to configuration drift 
if not properly synchronized. So what's the preferred approach here? Preferred approach is to use different ACLs, but share the same address definitions. This allows for flexibility and maintains a centralized source of truth. Next question is, how do you identify your network of interest from your intent? You can use a tag-based system to identify prefixes that are of interest or will be used in ACL terms. You can tag relevant prefixes with meaningful labels, such as ACL inbound or ACL outbound to indicate their intended use in ACL configuration. By tagging prefixes in the source of truth, you can easily add or remove them from the ACL terms without modifying the ACL configuration itself. This approach would simplify your ACL management and ensures that the changes to prefixes are automatically reflected in the generated ACLs. Next is, how do you handle cases where Git-related systems are unavailable and you want to deploy an ACL? Unfortunately, manual process is the way to go here. However, you can document that manual process for generating these ACLs, and that should include the necessary steps, commands, and tools that are required. You should also regularly test and validate the manual ACL generation process to ensure its effectiveness and reliability. Coming on to rollbacks, they are not straightforward when using Git for ACL management, as reverting a commit may only revert the ACL terms and not the associated network definitions. To handle rollbacks effectively, consider packaging your ACL and definitions as a container and tagging it with the corresponding commit ID. Use the tagged container to deploy the ACL changes and perform slow rollouts. In the event a rollback is required, you can deploy the previous container image or pin, pin the image in your CI-CD pipeline. This approach would ensure that the rollback ACL configuration remain in sync with the corresponding network state, minimizing the risk of inconsistencies. Now, sometimes operator also need to know if the issue is due to an ACL push or not. How do we track this? You should implement a mechanism to capture metrics whenever an ACL update or configuration change is pushed to a network device. You can then correlate the ACL update metrics with other network performance and security metrics to investigate potential issues or impacts. You can also utilize tools like Oxidized to back up device configuration in Git and track changes over time. Integrating the device configuration backup with the ACL management workflow would allow you to maintain a comprehensive history of network changes. So, to conclude, GitOps has the potential to revolutionize the way we manage and deploy our network ACLs. By embracing the principles of version control, collaboration, and automation, we can ensure that the infrastructure is always in the de desired state reducing the risk of failures, and improving our ability to recover from incidents. That's all from my end for today's session. I would like, now like to open the floor for any questions if you have, and if you want to talk more about this topic, my contact information is up on the slide. Thank you.